Welcome to part five of building the David clock. Uh, this is a, a fairly straightforward part of the build. Um, we're going to do the pendulum and the counterweight. So first we're going to prepare the pins. Um, these are the ones that connect the pendulum to the uh, pallets. And uh, that's done via a crutch, which is just a, a short piece. And so what we're doing is we're thinning the heads of the pins. Uh, to provide clearance between the, the pin and the clock face and then we'll trim them to length. So just a piece of sandpaper here. I am using 150 grit to, to uh, take it down quickly and uh, the exact thickness isn't critical. I'm just looking for uh, something about an eighth of an inch, a little bit more, maybe uh, 3 30 seconds or 3 16 something like that. So once you've got them both worked down, the next step is to trim them to length. So we've got them about even, uh, nice flat pin. And what we're going to do is use the great wheel notch as the, uh, the guideline. And this the length isn't critical. You want them long enough that they'll go through all the parts. Um, and short enough that it, it won't be sticking out. Um, so I'm just going to mark this. And it's a little bit awkward working with these pins. Um, the other thing I've used to cut these pins in the past has been um, a pair of pet nail trimmers. They actually work really well. Uh, but in this case, we'll just go ahead with the razor saw and uh, slice through the pin. And once it's cut, just clean up the edge a little bit. You don't want to reduce the size too much on the uh, on the pin itself, but just remove any fibers that are hanging off the end and smooth the end so that uh, it's even. So we'll go ahead and do the second one. Exactly the same thing, exactly the same length. Luckily these pins are small and relatively soft, so this isn't too difficult to do. Perfect. Okay, so set the two pins aside. We'll be using them later. And now we can get on to assembling the, uh, the pendulum. So we're just going to pop out the parts for the pivot and the bob and the crutch. So first thing to do is just clean them up a little bit. Any place where the, uh, the bridges to the carrier um, are still there, just clean those off a little bit. So the crutch is important to actually um, open up the holes and smooth out the holes in the crutch uh, because you don't want any resistance uh, or friction in this part. So what the crutch does is it transfers the motion of the pendulum to the uh, pallets and allows the pallets to um, uh, impart energy to the pendulum. Uh, so it's important that there's a little bit of play and it's, it works very, very um, loosely there so that there's no friction. So here we're going to go ahead and glue the pivot core to the end of the pendulum rod. So the pendulum rod is a solid, long uh, carbon fiber piece. And the orientation here is important. And what you'll see is that the rod is just a little bit thicker than the piece of plywood. And so it's going to sit a little bit high. So next we put on the uh, bob core. And what's important here is that it's completely parallel with the other end. So you want it sitting flat. Um, 
both ends sitting flat on the table. And again, it's going to sit a little bit proud of the, uh, of the, uh, the rod's going to sit proud of the plywood because it's a little thicker. So now we put the backs on. So here, um, the back is the one with the notch. And so that's going to accommodate the uh, additional space or the additional thickness of the rod. And what's important on uh, that one is that uh, the, the knife edge aligns perfectly um, on the core. So now on the uh, bob back, just add a little bit of glue. And again, you're just getting things lined up for aesthetically um, aesthetic purposes. And so always double check that the alignment is, uh, is correct. Um, you don't want the, uh, uh, the connection to the crutch to be on the wrong side of the, uh, of the pivot. Cool. a little bit of glue and you can see that the the front face of both the bob and the pivot cover up the connection with to the uh, to the pivot rod or to the pendulum rod sorry so now that it's all assembled the last step is just to insert the uh, adjustment screw so it's an m3 screw and you can just thread it right into that hole and it'll self self tap itself in uh, the, the wood is soft enough um, and it's uh, sized to the correct size to be able to take a M3 screw. So that's the, the pendulum. Now we're going to attach it to the pallets. So this is where those two pins come in and the crutch. So I'm going to use some graphite to ensure that there's very little friction. And the pin goes through the bottom. Um, so first through the crutch and through the bottom face of the pivot and you can see here that I'm making sure that it's uh, not too loose but uh, it moves smoothly so again through the crutch and into the pallets and you just want to make sure that everything here spins and moves very easily so there you have it that's the completed pendulum so next step will be the uh, counterweight so the counterweight is essentially just a box that holds weight uh, that drives the clock. So the weight falls over the period of about 36 hours and that uh, generates the energy to uh, run the clock. So all that the weight is transferred to the winder and then through the gear train all the way out to the pallets and the pallets push the pendulum um, back and forth keeping the time of the clock. So just do a quick dry fit here, make sure that everything's accurate. And uh, as a quick tip, you want to try and ensure that all the marked sides, so the A's and the B's, go to the inside of the box. Not critical, it doesn't affect the function, just affects the appearance. So the first uh, piece of the pendulum that, uh, or the counterweight that we're going to do is the, uh, the pulley. So we'll create, we'll glue up the end caps for the pulley axle first and it's just a, a spacer ring and the M circle. So apply a little bit of glue to the back. And put the M face side towards the spacer. And that just, uh, these axle caps will capture the ends of the uh, pulley axle so that it uh, it doesn't slide back and forth too much and rub against the uh, the frames of pillow blocks so doing exactly the same for the second axle cap and face side together and just set those aside to dry All right, so now we get on to the, uh, to the pillow blocks and the uh, pulley. So again here, uh, friction is your enemy. You want to make sure that uh, this is going to spin nice and smoothly and everything's aligned so that the pulley doesn't hit against the pillow blocks. You can 
can see that I've got a, a little bit of a hanger on there. Just clean all those little bridge pieces up. We're going to, um, so this maintains the space between the two pillow blocks. This little bridge piece. And we're just gluing all the faces that uh, are going to contact the, the pillow block. So glue that up. I'm just going to tidy up the, uh, the glue seam there. So here I've got the pulley and before I install the pulley I'm just going to uh, sand out the axle holes. I probably should have done this before I put the bridge on but six of one half dozen of the other. So you'll want to make sure that you're removing any of the laser residue inside the hole and just smoothing things out. So next we'll use a little bit of graphite in the hole for the axle to run on. And the next one. Just removing the pencil marks with the sandpaper. Clean it up a little bit. Perfect. Now we can assemble the pulley into the block. So the top part of the uh, of the pillow block assembly. Uh, really doesn't have any structural um, importance. It, all it does is it keeps the, the space between the two pillow blocks. Um, the important part is the lower end of the, of the uh, where it connects to the top of the counterweight box. And that's what we're going to do next. So you can see the pillow blocks actually um, get pressed completely through the top of the counterweight box. And this is going to take uh, take up the strain of the um, of the entire weight of the counterweight below it. So we actually press it all the way through, and then there's a retainer that ensures that it doesn't pull out. So I should have really done a dry fit here, but I was kind of committed once I put the glue on. So I, you'll see, uh, I had to struggle a little bit to get the. Uh, two pillow blocks pushed all the way through the top of the uh, the uh, counterweight box. It gets there eventually. A quick check before I did this and a little bit of sanding would have saved me a lot of effort here. But I've made I probably 50 clocks in the last uh, couple of years and I still make mistakes so don't feel bad if you make an error. Okay so the next thing is there's a, a little retainer that slides through those two holes and you're just going to glue that in place. And again here dry fitting um, would have prevented all the uh, the struggle and the effort here.
And again, it's very important that that pulley spins nice and smoothly. All right, now next onto the axle caps. So you're just gonna put a dab of glue. You can either put the glue on the very tip of the axle or into the pocket of the axle caps. And then press the axle caps in place. All right, next we're on to the actual counterweight box. So again, make sure that you get the mark sides towards the inside of the box. And first you're going to glue the top and the bottom onto the one of the side frames. They're both identical, it doesn't matter which one you pick. And you want to use your glue quite liberally here. Um, this is the, the one place where having a little extra glue squeeze off out is not a problem. Again, this, uh, these joints are going to take the full weight, uh, about a kilogram and a half of weight. So you want to make sure this box is quite strong. So you'll see that I'm really using a lot more glue than I typically use on a joint. And uh, making sure that every face is covered. Just slip that together and repeat again for the second side. Don't forget to apply that glue to the ends uh, where it connects to the top and the bottom as well. Now here's something that, uh, that I've done with all the clocks that I've built so far, um, is just create a bead of glue on all the inside joints of the box. You're never going to see this after, and it just provides a little bit of extra strength. It doesn't have to be super tidy. Um, this is You'll never see the inside of this box again, and it's just there for the strength. So here we go again. We're going to liberally apply glue to the remaining face here. And make sure you go all the way around uh, top and bottom and the faces of all the, uh, the tabs. fit the front plate on again making sure that the mark side of the letter A is on the inside of the box and just make sure it's fully pressed down onto all of the tabs and uh, I found that just using those same clamps that we used for the axle uh, or that for the wheel assembly just ensures that there's no twist that uh, gets in, uh, built into the counterweight. Um, I noticed uh, a couple of them that when I just uh, glued them up that they got a, a five degree twist in, over the length of the the counterweight so that's not really going to affect the the function of the clock but uh, keeping it straight uh, helps the appearance and this is a face plate it's just a purely decorative piece and uh, we're going to place that glue that in place on the front and it just lines up with the front face of the uh, counterweight. Um, pick whichever face looks best. Um, and 
and uh, apply the, the trim piece to that side. Um, it really doesn't matter that the counterweight is uh, symmetrical front to back aside from the faceplate. So this is the counterweight plug and you just want to make sure that everything's uh, more or less uh, 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 symmetrical here. So you want to make sure all the rings are concentric. And this, so the spacer goes in between and then the H, the, the retainer, uh, gets glued on top of the, the spacer. And try to get these aligned as perfectly as possible. It just makes your life a little bit easier later on. So we've got all the parts for the, the counterweight done. We're going to set that aside and let that dry fully uh, before we uh, add the, the weight to the counterweight. So we'll set those parts aside and come back once the glue is dry. So here we are, we've got uh, all the parts nice and dry. The first step is uh, just take some sandpaper and uh, remove any of the glue that might have squeezed out and smooth up any um, overhanging edges. Uh, just generally clean up the, uh, the counterweight. So I'm just doing a quick sand, all faces. Again, it's like with anything, a little bit of extra time sanding, a little bit of extra time cleaning up. It makes a huge difference in the appearance of the final uh, product. So the next step is to install the, the weight into the counterweight. So I um, designed the clock around uh, using Daisy BBs. Um, it's a 4,000 pack of BBs. And uh, they're just convenient. They're, they're really cheap and it's the exact amount that you need. So um, if you want to use your own, people have used anything from pennies to fishing weights to um, car tire balancing weights uh, pretty much anything that's going to come up to um, around three pounds three and a half pounds anywhere in that range the the actual weight isn't critical you just want enough to um, to ensure the clock runs and not too much that there's a huge strain on the axles so uh, if you fill the weights, um, you don't want to go much under three pounds, but uh, once you hit that three pound weight, anything over that uh, um, is unnecessary or should be unnecessary. Yeah, and I'm just doing a little bit of a dry fit here before I go ahead and fill it to make sure that the plug fits. And I'm using the famous hand funnel, which uh, you'll see how well that works. Any one of these that, uh, that you drop on the floor, make sure you pick them up because uh, they're uh, online with Lego for, uh, for pain when you step on them. Also, if you do this in the house, your roommate slash spouse slash anyone who's using a vacuum cleaner will uh, uh, not appreciate uh, how difficult they are to vacuum up. So we put the entire contents minus whatever I spilt um, into the counterweight. And now we're just going to fit the plug.
so tapping it a little just uh, allows them to settle. Um, you can fit um, a few more in, and it just gives it space for the, uh, the plug to turn at the end of the counterweight. So here we go, we're just going to fit that plug in. And you want to turn it about 90 degrees. So there's actually a, a little plug key that's uh, provided with the kit that fits the slot and turn it about 90 degrees. There you have the counterweight.